Now more than ever, we have an opportunity to be a positive force in the world, to help heal the divide, to treat each other and ourselves with respect. But with so many tools out there from meditation to physical training, proper nutrition, therapy, and so many others, we all need a little help navigating all the options. Join us as we share in-depth information, insights, and thought-provoking discussions that will help answer your questions about how to stay calm, cool, and connected during these times. Welcome to Calm, Cool, and Connected, your guidebook to peace of mind. Hello, and welcome to Calm, Cool, and Connected. I'm your host, Dr. Elizabeth Bedrick. Relationships can be difficult enough to maintain, even when daily life is stable and consistent. However, for many military spouses, life is generally anything but consistent due to frequent moves, deployments, and the impact this can have on stability, their own careers, childcare, and more. Joining us today is Bianca Martinez Oberhelman, a retired military spouse who is here to share with us about her mental health journey and the influence that being a military spouse has had on it. Hi, Bianca. Welcome. Hi. I'm so glad to be here. So glad to share an experience that, you know, not a lot of people get some insight into. Yes. And we're so happy to have you for that exact reason. And it's something that is, I think, talked about a lot, but people really don't understand it. And definitely not in the way as somebody who's lived it. So before we really dive into that, tell us a little bit about yourself and you know your career, what you're doing currently, all of those things. Yeah, yeah. So um, I am the now retired military spouse of a, a guy who was in the Navy SEAL teams for 20 years. At that time, I was also maintaining my own career. I was a news anchor in Norfolk, Virginia, and then went out to transition into doing some corporate communications work. And now I do communications for the company that my husband started with some friends. So it's always a constant to be attached to my husband in some way, shape or form. Even when I was in TV, I was so dedicated to telling the stories of military families. Wow. Wow. That's so he's had, it sounds like mutually a lot of support, a lot of um, real dedication to each other throughout those years. What are the phases? Yes, for sure. What are the phases of being a military spouse? Like, what does that mean? How can you describe that? You know, I think that I have the unique ability to share from different points of that time as being a military spouse. I I was the girlfriend at the beginning of everything. When my husband started going through buds, I was his girlfriend. By the time he got out of buds, I was his fiance. And then we spent a, a lifetime together in the military as active duty. So, you know, there's the active duty space and phase of being a military spouse. And within there, there are some different phases of deployment at home time. And you hear about transition a lot from when folks are transitioning out of the military and into the civilian space. That is one transition. But I really think at all times, even in all these phases, you're constantly transitioning because you're working from that deployment space and into that reintegration space when they're coming home. Yes, which has just got to be really a struggle. Like, even if you are excited, of course, that he's coming back home and you get to see him, it's still a change. Like, you have your day to day routine, you have the way you do things with the kids, all of those that are disrupted. How did you manage that transition? Well, you know, you're 100% right. I mean, it is, it's, it can be disruptive. You find your own ways. But I also had to realize that part of coming home and jumping right into it for my husband personally, that was experience I had, he wanted to be involved with the kids right away. Part of that was his healing process as well. So I kind of had to let go of that control and understand that me supporting him in that is going to be better in the long run for both of us and for our entire family. Sure. So it's, it's, it's hard, but you kind of have to step back a little bit and, and let them come into the space. Absolutely. It sounds like, I mean, it's really a requirement. If your mm-hmm. desire is to make it work, then you know, this is what comes along with it. And so what, what is within my circle of control to make it as best as it can be? And it sounds like you had a lot of insights around that. Yeah, you know, it's hard because when you're in that active duty time of uh, being a military spouse, you are absolutely in survival mode. That is that is what you call it. You're in survival mode. You're trying to get through the day to the day. And when, you know, the, the sink breaks at the same time as you're trying to get out the door to get to your job as the kids are coming home from school, how do you handle all of that without breaking down? Well, you're going to. And you have to be kind to yourself. There are times, I can tell you, there was one time I didn't get a nap (laughs) and I worked early morning news at the time. And, you know, somebody had called saying they needed to come to the house to check something out, to do some work. That put me into the breakdown mode, something Mm -hmm. that simple. 
you have to be kind to yourself. And we talk a lot about in military spouse space, resiliency. And that's not about being strong necessarily. That's not about being strong in the struggle. It's about pulling yourself out of the struggle, giving yourself that moment, then being kind enough to yourself to say, that's okay, I needed that moment, and then step out of it and move on. I love how you're normalizing that. I love how you are encouraging people to show up with space and grace to be human. And that is so important versus addressing it from here's how to make sure it never happens. But as you're saying, that's not realistic. So when it does happen, this is how we can address it. This is how we can really nurture it. Mm -hmm. How is your career influenced by being a military spouse? Uh, Well, it was influenced because, again, like I said earlier, I really loved to tell the stories of military families, what the jobs of military uh, men and women around us were doing, because I really think otherwise there wasn't a voice to that necessarily. We were Mm -hmm. in a military town when I was um, in the, the TV space. So some people understood it, but they didn't understand all of it. So it was really nice to be able to share everything from the day to day jobs to the struggles that some spouses were dealing with while their spouses were away on deployments. Um, So it was a privilege for me to do that. Mm -hmm. In the space of communications, I had to, uh, you know, understand that that working under pressure (laughs) is something that comes with a day to day job, right? And military spouses know how to work under pressure. You know, one of the things I always say about military spouses in the workplace is we are semper gumby. That means we're always flexible, always willing to, you know, step up and do the job, kind of an athlete in the workspace because of the struggles and challenges we deal with at home. I'm sure you develop a whole lot of different skill sets than the average person. That's for sure. Um, yeah. What are some of the mental health concerns that you have seen specifically, maybe that you've experienced or that you've seen in close friends because of this particular lifestyle? You know, I, I see a lot in uh, talking about the the new military spouse and the new active duty spouse. I myself was the person who thought I didn't need to have necessarily a support system within that space, the sisterhood that I found. Um, I think the most important thing for anybody's mental health in any space, whether or transition of the phase of the active duty, the transition into the civilian world, is you have to have a support system of people who understand Mm -hmm. the, the very unique struggle of being a military spouse. I had some great friends who were not in the community of of the military. However, they couldn't really relate and hold space for me when I needed the opportunity to, to vent or uh, to share something that only those people could understand. You have to be open to getting to know the people in your community, in your personal military community, and then being able to take that with you outside as you transition into the civilian world as well. You're going to want to hold on to those people, especially if you're moving from the location that you were at. You need to hold on to those, those folks who are your support system. It's okay to ask for help. That is the number one thing. It's okay. It doesn't make you weak in this, in this community at all. We're all, sure. we're all the same. Yeah. Yeah. It sounds like the relatability piece of it is so important. How Mm -hmm. do you know or how do you suggest for, you know, even the people you're supporting that it's time to get help, maybe professional help? What are some of those, you know, it's just maybe too far or too much to manage. How do you base that? Uh, You know, I think you can tell when somebody is is not their usual self. Mm -hmm. And I think good friends who hold space for each other can see when something is not right. You can see a personality change. The things that they loved doing with you uh, to get away from the the the, the challenges uh, or to kind of get a little bit of release and some and some self care. Those things aren't working for them anymore. Mm-hmm. That should be a trigger. If you see that in your friends, you need to tell them it is time to get some help. And and honestly, military spouses, we know that well because. We tend to do that a lot with our spouses once they transition out of the military. We're looking for those same types of triggers with our husbands or our wives. And so we should be able to find it in our our friends as well. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense that you're just Mm -hmm. being prepared to support, show, meet people where they're at is really what I'm hearing Mm -hmm. you say here, knowing them well enough to know when they are struggling and then really supporting them and encouraging them to get the help they need. Yeah. Yaka, where can people find you online, social media? Yeah, you can find me. The easiest way is at to be strong on Instagram. And listen, I'm there just to be real. I don't have anything to, you know, really prove to anybody. I'm just there sharing 
my experience as now a former military spouse, a mom raising two teenagers, because that's a lot of fun, and, and a mom who's really tried to take care of myself. That is the one important thing that all women can really relate to anybody, actually, whether yeah. you're a military spouse or not, is we have to take care of ourselves first. So true. Well, thank you, Bianca. This was great information. I appreciate it. Thank you. And thank you all for tuning into this episode of Calm, Cool, and Connected. Please make sure to find us on Facebook and Instagram, and also make sure to rate and subscribe to our podcast so that others can discover our content as well. Thank you again for joining us on this episode of Calm, Cool, and Connected.